Hello, welcome to Transmissible Briefs, episode 10. Today we'll pay attention to a special issue of the Belgian comic series Luke and Lucy, as the Flemish say, Suske and Wiske. The entire story is fully dedicated to raise antibiotic awareness among readers. With a scenario from Pieter van Gucht and art design by Luc Mojo, this is one very fine example of public health education for kids and their parents. So if you're a fan of comics or if you just love creative health education tools, then this podcast may be interesting for you to complete. The story starts with Ambrose, who is laying sick on the couch. His friends try to comfort him, but he feels like he's going to die and he knows how to show it. In fact, he's suffering from influenza, and Aunt Sybil tells him he will probably not die of that. But Ambrose insists he suffers a fatal illness, and he requires pity. So when his friends refuse to indulge him, he calls his auntie Biotics, who never failed to smother him in attention, and her magic bullet for every illness is a solid dose of antibiotics. Fortunately, the Ambrose family doctor confirms what his friend already told him. Antibiotics have no effect on viral infections such as influenza. But antibiotics is not impressed, and she empties her own medicine cabinet to stuff Ambrose with remnants of her old antibiotics. Obviously, Ambrose is not feeling any better, so antibiotics decides to take Ambrose to Dragon Island. This is the place where her uncle was washed ashore after a shipwreck. The inhabitants saved him from a life-threatening infection with powerful antibiotics. On Dragon Island, they meet the Pennies, a multitude of small mushroom people with powerful penicillin guns. Suddenly, the mushroom people are viciously attacked by hordes of streptococci, and the battle follows. After Luke has helped to deflect the streptococcal attack, our groups of adventurers ask the help of the pennies to treat Ambrose. The pennies ask what's wrong with Ambrose? Did the streptococci bite him too? When Antibiotics explains that Ambrose has influenza, the pennies explain that their antibiotic guns are useless against the virus infection. However, Antibiotics refuses to believe this and she gets quite upset about this refusal. She knocks one of the mushroom people unconscious and kidnaps him to the ship to treat her favorite nephew. Of course, that doesn't work out so well. The kidnapped mushroom tries to escape, but then runs into an overwhelming majority of pathogenic streptococci. And soon, the germs capture antibiotics, embroys, and penny the mushroom. And now they have gotten hold of the powerful antibiotic gun. And the germs plan to analyze it and find ways to resist it. And they do. The resistant streptococci build their attack and the old and trusted weapon of the penicillin can no longer harm them. Soon the germs have conquered all the penicillin mushrooms and they start to invade the dragon island through every orifice they can find. The poor dragon gets fatally ill with this resistant infection and all seems lost. Of course it would not be a Luke and Lucy story if not at the last moment their friends come to the rescue. Their friend the professor flies to the island and injects the dragon with a new and more powerful antibiotic. The dragon recovers, the mushroom penicillins learn to produce the new antibiotic and our friends fly back home. During the flight, the professor teaches antibiotics the lesson of this adventure. She accepts it, that antibiotics should never be used for viral infections, and remnants of old antibiotics do not belong in your bathroom cabinet. They should be returned to the pharmacist. They now have experienced firsthand what the risk of antibiotic resistance are. And you simply cannot keep inventing a new antibiotic every day. So all's well that ends well in this adventure, as it always does with Luke and Lucy. After the comic adventure ends, the reader is treated to a couple of extra pages with background information and facts on antibiotics, written in a simple and clear language. Now let's see if this message will help to change popular use of antibiotics. Such comic book need to be translated in the languages of countries where antibiotics are still freely available over the counter. These countries often experience a strong push from pharmaceutical companies to sell lots of them. And now, how will this help? A
problem as international and complex as this will not be solved with a comic book only. Solutions need to be found and put in place on many levels. For one thing, antibiotics should not be available as freely as they are now. The problem of over-the-counter sales will need to be addressed and it's going to be an enormous challenge because in many countries that is the only way for seriously ill people to get them. This is yet another reason to invest in good primary healthcare systems in developing countries. Health policies will need to find solutions to all the complex angles of this problem and educating children and their parents is a small but important step in this. This is why the Dutch Minister of Health, Mrs. Edith Schippers, supported the creation of this educational comic book. I hope it will be translated into many languages. You can download the full adventure for free in PDF from the Dutch government website. If you are interested in more educational comics for public health, then be sure to also visit simazacomics.com. And finally, for inspiring examples of teaching public health science problems to children, please read the excellent work of Professor Andy Oxman of the Norwegian Knowledge Center for Health Services. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. We'll come back soon with transmissible briefs on more and new public health news. Thank you.